Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of This Versus That. Just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, this is this, Vega from Serpent X Tech, versus that, the ASIC, the What's Minor M30S Plus. We're gonna be actually taking a look and trying to figure out how to take apart this guy. Um, shouldn't be too hard, looks like we got four screws. We're not tearing it down all the way, we're just getting it ready for immersion cooling. Four to remove the fans on either side. There are additional screws, uh, kind of, there's a metal bracket behind here that kind of sits in front of the hash boards. You got to take that off in order to get to the hash boards, but we don't need to do all that. So four on each side for the fans, but we need to also remove the power supply fan. Uh, I don't know how to do that, but just looking around here, I mean, it looks like we got a screw there, screw there, probably these two right here, and then the same for the other side. So, I don't think we can remove just these screws right here. One, two, and then three uh, to get this little plate off. I don't think that's how it works. Then we got four screws for the power supply fan. Um, but I'm probably just going to remove this whole power supply assembly very carefully um, and try to figure it out. But we got my drill. I do have it on a low, low torque setting. Uh, definitely don't want to strip out anything or, or you know, uh, cause any damage to the screws. So let me go ahead and start doing that. First, we're going to unplug the power supply, obviously, or the fan power cable. Get everything started. All right. Going to want to keep these fans. Pretty high RPM, I think almost 8,000 RPM type fan. I can use it somewhere else if I don't use it on this ASIC. Ooh, thing's got some weight to it. Let's see if we can get you guys the model number. Oh, upside down. There is the model number and fan type. There are the hash boards, as you can see, in all their glory. This side is going to be the side that's the, this side over here that we're looking at right now is going to be the side that's facing up. Let me rotate this for you. I got it on some foam spacers just to give me some clearance. All right, same thing, disconnect power. And let me turn it more my way so that way. Yeah, these are the same model fan. I oh, don't know. It just looks different. It's because of orientation. There we are. No grill on this side because this is exhausting out. Plus, it already has plastic protection. Same model. Just put those bad boys together. There's the other side of the hash boards. But we need to start getting after these guys. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to get these by hand. Gotta be very careful not to strip these whatsoever. That'd be very bad news bears if I did. So let's not strip these, just go at it very slow. Make sure you're, you take it nice and slow on all four or, yeah, it looks like Four screws total on either side. And my biggest concern is the ribbon cables that are going to the hash board or the power cables that are going to the hash board. I definitely don't want to strip those whatsoever. So this front plate is loose already. Let's focus on that real quick. See if we can't get this little guy off. Wish I had my LTT screwdriver. 
okay these are threaded into the house into the uh, frame itself even though these look like little right here like little slide rails these are threaded into the housing itself I can see the hole that they make or cut into all right carefully lift up okay so we're gonna expose some stuff here looks like we got a ribbon cable and I'm not sure what this guy goes to definitely looks like it feeds into some information related to the power supply this is very interesting let me see if I can show you this so you see these bars right here that kind of feels like it feeds the power and then goes down these what I would say bus bars the power into the hash boards you can see them go down into each board hey let me give you a quick update I got the power supply disconnected there is no wires on the bottom side of this thing um, it's just the way this bar is connected here you got the bar right here this kind of just sits on here like so which connects to the other assembly or the other bar bus bar right there so these like mini bus bars I think is the proper terminology I'm not sure you can see on the front here um, I disconnected the white ribbon cable but I left the gray one alone and some of the connections on here are for like feeding power to the fan 4 pin uh, TF card reader um, you know ready or green or blue uh, green or red light and then your ethernet port that's basically what this board this daughter board is doing right here and I got everything kind of mapped out in order so now I need to figure out how to get into this power supply uh, looking at it we do have a screw down here at the bottom we got two more on the side here and maybe we can get in there and then the fourth for the fan so. all right quick update you don't have to take off every single screw i did take off for example the ones towards the back end here obviously there's two on this side of the power supply uh, two more on the top side of the power supply and then obviously the bottom one on the bottom part of the power supply and i did loosen up this back screw you can't see it is on the bottom edge uh, just to give it a little bit of extra wiggle room and now we can see into the power supply the connector for the fan is right here but we got to remove the four screws and we can see the model number i would just be careful because these are some capacitors uh, and you do not want to touch them even if the device has been off they can still hold a charge and you will be in deep trouble um, and then don't try to attack it from the front because obviously you got your connectors up front and especially this is going to be wired into the board the main board and you don't want to remove this screw and try to attack it from this side. So the back side, at least for this model, seems to be the better way to go. Uh, remove those screws that I mentioned, and uh, then we just gotta remove this, the four screws that's holding this fan in. But that kind of slots in just like so. Um, and once you remove the screws, you should be able to pull it out ever so gently. I would loosen this back this back screw right down here just to give you a little bit extra wiggle room um, and that should allow you to pop this out very carefully lay it down and then you should be able to get to that connector and remove it it does look like it's a little bit glued in or something so I'm, I'm gonna get some pliers and very carefully again avoiding everything else inside here to remove that connector and remove the four screws so that way we can put this power supply back on top hey so real quick update they made it hard actually that's a pretty good shot Let's see if you guys can see that there's the type of capacitor it is there's some internals if you want to pause the screen you can see all the way down it now that four pin header um if you don't update the firmware i believe there's a a dummy fan adapter you can get uh, but you see that white stuff they kind of like glued or sealed it uh, making it hard to remove this connector again four pin connector um, so you had to use a razor blade 
just to get a little cut in there and then pull it off. But you can see the front edge was sealed and it looks like they try to get the back edge a little bit. Maybe it's more or less for protection, uh, but it just takes some, the, the fan is attached via normal case fans, screws. And then here is the power supply fan if you want to replace yours. All right, so I got the plate back on, the fan removed. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these screws and fan to the side. And just to get everything situated, you know, because we gotta get the bus bars, these screw holes at least lined up, um, as well as the screws on your housing lined up. Just gonna get everything in place. You can see the screw holes already in there. Um, and I need to attach the bus bar and get everything started and then I'm going to snug it up. If you're a little bit concerned, maybe start by hand with a regular screwdriver uh, just to not cross thread anything and then use the drill um, if you want to move faster. Otherwise, I'm just going to start putting this thing back together so we can get it ready. But just going to be very careful, get everything started to where it has some movability. Um, and then I'm going to start working. Just, I'm gonna, actually, I'm just going to get these two started on the bus bars and then start working on the chassis. Yeah, that middle hole lines up just fine. So I'm gonna start working on the chassis screws now. Chassis screws feel a little bit softer metal than the uh, screws at the front of the power supply here. So definitely be careful. The uh, type of thread is, feels a little bit weak. And if you look very carefully, let me bring you over here real quick. You can see how it sits. You know, obviously the ribbon cable's in the way, but it gets out of the way. You can see how it sits and aligns on this bar. Focus. And so we're just gonna continue screwing those in. Just snug it up. And then we put the front housing back on. But as far as getting this thing prepared for immersion cooling, it's not too bad. Um, but I didn't really see a comprehensive guide online, hence the reason why I made it. All right, bus bar is good. Everything's tightened up. Let me just give it a one more once over. And so I wanted to make this guide because I didn't see anything out there. I mean, I'm pretty sure all the various mining operations have something, maybe like a training video for their employees or whatever. But they definitely don't have one that's available now. They get guides and stuff like that online, paper guides, pictures, stuff like that. Um, and actually the, the one that I saw to remove the power supply fan for this model, I think it was the, fourth, the M20 and not the, so all I'm gonna do is connect this ribbon cable now here. But all the guides I saw, at least the, the pictures, were more for the M20, not this particular model. And that's pretty much it. This thing is ready for immersion cooling. I mean, the previous video we did the firmware uh, for both the power supply and the miner itself. So we should be pretty much good to go if I can get it in the hole. That's what she said. Um, but yeah. All right. So there she is. She's all set for immersion cooling. This is gonna be towards the top of the tank. This side is gonna be laying on the bottom of the tank. Um, and I believe this power supply is actually better than the M20 because it has better positioning of its thermal sensors. So it should do really well because on the M20, from my understanding, you want the front to be the bottom, right? Because that's where all the cool liquid is. But this uh, M30S++ is ready for immersion cooling. Uh, we'll move on to that in the next video. That's going to do it for right now. Please do me a favor on the way out. Please make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed down below. Make sure to hit the notification bell as well as uh, check out additional links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. And I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.